Aloha and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I am going to walk you through the basics of this transponder. Um, I'm going to go over the code in uh, Moby Flight. Uh, I'm going to go over, and, and it's super simple, I'm going to go over the files in Thingiverse. And I'm actually going to pull it out and show you mine. It, it doesn't look pretty behind the scenes, but then again, how often are you taking your stuff apart and admiring the backside of it. Uh, for me, the answer is never unless there's a problem. So without further ado, I will jump into those other videos and then we'll do a recap at the end. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. So here I have Moby Flight up. Now this is an older version of Moby Flight. I haven't updated. <clears throat> and you can see everything in my system that I've got an Arduino doing something for me, or I've got code, because some of these actually go to a, the same Arduino. If you look over here, Arduino 1, Arduino 2, Arduino 3, uh, <clears throat> then we got 4 and 5 down here, then I got the transponder. Now my transponder is set up on an Uno. I do not recommend setting up the transponder on an Uno. The way I built this transponder, it takes up every single port on the Uno. So every single place you can plug a wire in, you plug a wire in. That's kind of painful in Arduino because if you have to shift pins, you can't shift. If you know how to work with um, Moby Flight, you know that you actually have to shift the pin. Like let's say I want to move pin 7 to pin 8. I want to change that output. Well, I have to shift it over to an unused pin first before I can move it where I want to move it. But if you have no unused pins, you have to uninstall something or delete something to create an unused pin to move something. <clears throat> and on my Uno, there's just no space to do that. So it was kind of a pain. You can use an Uno if you have one. I just don't recommend it. And I will show you here. All right, so sim variable, and this is the output config, four digit code, index normally one, transponder code, there's 154 matches, Microsoft, generic, avionics, transponder code, four digit code. Uh, now on display, here's the way I have it set up, output device, that's my transponder. Display type is display module because it's the Mac 7219 and it's the LED module, and I'm using every other uh, place to get those, L the, those LEDs lit closer to the actual knobs that I'm using, uh, the rotary encoders. I'm not using a compare table, I don't believe. I'm not using anything fancy. No preconditions. So this, and that sim variable, and that's on the output. Now on the input, we've got X1, X10, X100, X1000, um, the ident button, and each mode of the transponder. So from here down to transponder test. So that much of it is what I had to um, create. So we'll start off with this guy here. So <clears throat> on the input, input, you know, the Uno transponder, for me that was COM8, the 10X, Microsoft, X, uh, Xponder underscore 10 decrement. So it's under Microsoft generic radio transponder 10. So when you go in here and you're choosing that output on left, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, uh, generic radio, and this is the 10. Now on the left is when it's decreasing, uh, the 10, and on the right is when it's increasing. See? And as you're going through, a faster way to do it is to copy this, paste it on the right, 
and when you hit this drop down that increase will be right there so you just have to re you have to select the increase from the drop down for the paste and it's the same thing as you go through um for each one of these when you're doing your your setup so and, and i'll show you on this one here that's the hundred but if you look, they're all right there. They're all together. The transponder one, um, decrease, increase, the 10, decrease, increase, uh, 100, decrease, increase, 1,000, decrease, increase. So they're all one on top of the other on top of the other. And then you get to, we'll go to the transponder modes. So transponder off, off, right there, just a Microsoft generic avionics, uh, transponder off. And there's no precondition, no config references. Same goes for all of these as I go down, the transponder standby. Again, Microsoft generic avionics, transponder standby. Boom. Very simple. I don't have a press and release uh, setup, but they're all under that same area. So let's let's go to transponder altitude here. Let me open it up. And you can see transponder alt. And it was under the same a uh, Microsoft generic avionics transponder alt. Same thing for test. Transponder TST, avionics, nothing earth shattering. Everything was very, very simple. The ident button <clears throat> was the ident button. And uh, what I did with that was on the, the times 1000, um, rotary encoder I enabled the push button on that meaning I just wired in the push button and I just turned it to I turned it into the toggle itself and there's nothing on the release as you can see but Microsoft generic radio transponder ident toggle boom works like a champ and that output goes to an LED that has a, a 300 ohm resistor in line with it and it lights the ident light. Very simple, very easy to do. And let's go to the modules and I will show you. There's my UNO transponder and there's everything on the UNO transponder. <clears throat> and again, like the LED module, that's the actual uh, 7219. So for me, it was um, 10, 11, 12. On that, uh, the the X1 for the transponder is just pins two and three, one D10 per, and then I named it four and five for X10, six and seven for X100, eight and nine for X1000. Pin A0 for me is off. Standby is A1, A2, A3 is my alt. Uh, test is A4. And there's my ident button. So not a very difficult thing to set up. It's a very basic um, board uh, slant uh, transponder setup. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, though. I got to tell you, it's, it's worked miracles for me. It looks great. Uh, I have owned three devices that I've used as transponders in this cockpit. Um, before the cockpit actually got built, built, I used the SciTech Logitech radio panel, and I was not happy with it because it's a very large panel. It's actually deceptively large. I went from there to the PropWash SIM um, transponder, and I was happy for a little while. The reason I wasn't super happy, and I'll probably mention this a few more times, is those connectors on the back, there's no strength to them. If you, if you breathe on that connection funny, it's coming off because the actual shielding that surrounds the connector when you put it in place, 
is not soldered to the board. It is a press fit. There is no strength to the back of that thing. So it, it's going to snap on you and it's going to take the conductors with it. And mine absolutely took the conductors with it. So mine's not usable now, unfortunately. So this one out of the three for me is the best by far. I am ridiculously happy with it. So this is um, the setup. I'm going to jump into another section here where I actually show you the 3D file. <clears throat> All right, so here we are, and here is the 3D file. <clears throat> now today, I went in and set up an account on Thingiverse. Here I am, Shade Tree Home Sim, you can kind of see. It matches all my YouTube stuff. And I only have one thing in there, and that's this guy. <clears throat> now, that's deceptive because there's actually two 3D files in here. That is the ident cover. It's a lens. And if you want to use this, you got to print this with a clear PLA so you can see everything through it. So you'll be able to actually see the light through this. Here's an area here for the LED to just kind of get... I hot glued the LED in place. Um, you can do whatever you want. But red LED, hot glued in the back there, work like a champ. And here is the 3D picture or 3D file itself. What does this do for me? There you go. Now this little tray on the back here, what I did with mine, <clears throat> I found a an Arduino card holder just to neaten things up. And I actually glued a holder onto this little ledge here so the card could just be on the back. Because you'll notice there's no real shell. There's no box structure around any of this. So I just put a holder on the bottom up. Pardon me, slight earthquake there, and that's just my knee. Uh, I put an Arduino holder on the bottom here, uh, glued it in place. So the Arduino car is facing up that way. Plugged all my wires in, and the whole thing can come in and out as a unit. Let's do this. Here we go. So there you can see... And it doesn't like my trackball. Now here, and it's hard to see. I'll see if I can zoom in a little. Yeah, so that little ledge in there, I put an indent in. Uh, so when you have the rotary encoders, they'll go in pretty snug. The rotary encoders will go straight in. And you'll have space where they can actually be recessed. Which is nice. Now there's different types of rotary encoders and I'll I'll talk about those. Um, if you don't like the fact that it says Shade Tree Home Sim down here, you can get rid of that. You know, I mean, you can do whatever you want. Uh, the reason I called this Transp uh, Transponder T03 is because this is my third attempt at building it and I'm happy with it. And what you'll see here, and it may not be difficult, but you can see it right up here, this ledge. On a lot of the older transponders, there's actually like a white outline. So what I did was I, I put a raised ledge around there and I just use a white paint marker to recreate that white outline. And I also uh, highlighted the transponder T03 over here. I, I uh, highlighted my ident, uh, all my labels, and my Shade Tree Home Sim over there. And there you go. You'll also notice there's a hole here and then there's a hole over here. Those are for small screws. It doesn't the, the the smaller ones that you use for a lot of stuff, I think they're like the three millimeter, five millimeter. Um, I, I've used those to just keep it mounted in the pit, but I instead of me having to tap holes into it, I just put holes into the design. <clears throat> so that right there is the 3D file. <coughs> And I will put a link to this as well. But down here, I was very simple. I didn't put a lot of information in here. But you'll see what I did do. And you'll pardon me. I've got a very dry throat right now. I've got a dehumidifier running down here. And uh, it's killing my throat. Um, a brief description of what I kind of talked about. The ident lens to be printed with a clear PLA. Red LED mounted behind it. 
uh, 300 ohm resistor uh, to the LED. And here is that parts list. Now, I'm going to leave it in Thingiverse, and I'm going to have a link to Thingiverse in the main video where I put all these together. Uh, and these are clickable links. So rotary encoders. Uh, let's open a new tab. And here you go. There's the rotary encoder. <clears throat> now, there's different rotary encoders out there. I do not like the ones that actually have the, the mini printed circuit board on the back. And the reason I don't like those is they need power to them. You actually have to run power from the Arduino card to the rotary encoders. Here, you're not really doing that. Um, here, you're, you're running your, like here is going to be the, the actual, it's going to be ground, and then you're going to have the rotary side, like the increment um, increase and decrease. And on the other side, you've got two connections, which are for the push button. So one side has the increase, decrease, and ground. The other side has push button and ground, and you're done. There's no need to run power to these. And these are the ones I used. Um, I, I'm, I'm very happy with the uh, with the knobs that came with them too. You can kind of see here. And there's the actual diagram. I'll click on that. So there's the actual um, mounting detail and diagram of the switch itself or of the, the switch part and the rotary encoder part. And we'll go back over here. Five position switch. Now I found two because these things change a lot on uh, both Amazon and eBay. Um, now you, you're not limited to a five position. Uh, you can use more. You may have a hard time finding just a five position, but even a switch position, you're only going to use five positions of it anyways. So, excuse me, that part really doesn't matter. The 7219, uh, anybody who's played with Arduinos, you've seen these things a million times. I, I've got a bunch of these laying around. Now, the way I hook everything up is just DuPont wiring. Uh, some people do a lot of hard soldering. Um, I've done a lot of that. I have everything I need to solder with. This is the easiest way to, to, to test what you're doing is these DuPont connectors. Uh, <clears throat> if you're not confident of your soldering skills, go with DuPont connectors. And the other thing you can do with the DuPont connectors to the Arduino, and I've done this, it, it seems kind of cheesy, but it, it gives your connections a little bit of strength. It's I've actually plugged in the DuPont connector end here, the male end, into the female side of the board. I actually just did a little hot glue right on the mating area on the side. So you're not interfering with the connectivity between the pin and the receptacle, but you're holding this guy in place. It, you're never going to see the connection unless you're dismantling your stuff, and it does add a little bit of strength to the connections. So one of the little things I've done as I've built my stuff um, I do recommend using a Mega for this. You'll have a lot of unused um, ports that you can easily use for other parts of your setup. I easily could have <clears throat> thrown the brakes on here or the trim wheel. Um, there, there's so many things I could have thrown on here had I used a Mega instead of an Uno. Um, now this Elegoo Mega, are the, the reason I went with this one the actual Arduino Mega, the, the brand name one, was $50. This one was $20. And I have used this throughout my cockpit. In, in my setup right now, I probably have five of these. These, these Elegoo uh, Mega R3 boards, I've had a lot of good luck with them. Nothing bad to say about them. And uh, as we go down a little further, you know, these are just, uh, this is a resistor kit. I used a 300 ohm resistor in mine. They come with a resistor kit and it's got a, yeah. Yeah, they got a 330 right in there and this kit was only eight bucks. So if you need resistors, if you use them for anything, I, I kind of do tinker around. So I've already used like half of this box. Uh, they're out there, they're easy to get. 
and then we get into the LEDs. I have so many of these things laying around. This was the this was a cheaper kit I found. It was only five bucks, and I'm using the red one right there plus the 300. Uh, I forget which leg I put the resistor on. It might have been the shorter one. I honestly forget at the moment. Um, but that's pretty much it for for the wiring side of it and the pieces parts I used. And again, it's all up here now. So if you got questions, comments, concerns, you know, ask away. I will put a link to this Thingiverse, which is thingiverse.com slash thing colon 646-8734. I will put that in the actual video when I get the video compiled. All right, and without further ado, here is the transponder itself. <clears throat> So I'm going to carefully pull this out and it's, it's got a little bit of a, a little bit of resistance and I don't want to mess anything up, but as you can kind of see, and I will lower this so you can see it, here is the inner workings of that transponder. It's a simple Uno, um, again, I, I mentioned it in the other video. I just 3D printed a a holder and I screwed the, the that Elegoo card, this is the Elego Uno, directly onto it. Um, and then I'll show you here. You can see I've got the uh, rotary switch here. Um, let me see if I can rotate this around and then hold on let me undo this a little bit as we go up here you can see and it's a little rough there's the uh, LED there's a common ground right there by all that yellow in the LED uh, there's the max 7219 there's all of my uh, encoders at the bottom there's it's a super simple setup, super easy to throw together. Um, but you take up every single available space <clears throat> with the exception of there's a digital ping you don't use. And then there's the, let me back out so it focuses, the SCLs that would normally, well, the SCL in the uh, SDA that would normally do like an LCD display or control it. So a lot of this gets used, which is why I would probably recommend, if I if I were to do this again, I'd probably shift over to using uh, an, a Mega. Um, but you can see it's it's very easy to, to set up. A little bit of soldering just to get everything um, on the rotary encoders. But it's, it's just one one connection in the back which I love and it's super simple to go in I just gotta be very careful because I didn't give myself much space as I did this but now it's back in and there she is and the reason everything's up but the cockpit looks like it's just in a Windows environment is I've got uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator minimized right now But there it is. That's my transponder in a nutshell. Um, I'll put the links to my Thingiverse stuff on, on this video. If you want to try to build this yourself, you know, knock yourself out, ask me questions. I'll gladly answer them when I can. Um, and, and if you do, I, I'd love to know if somebody out there wants to use it. Um, I think it'd be pretty awesome. Hope it helps somebody out there. Um, and uh, I'm going to button this back up now. So there you have it. That was everything I did to build this transponder with the exception of flat black paint <laughs> for painting. And then I used the white paint pen around these uh, this raised area here on the lettering. And uh, hot glue was used to hold the ident light in place, to hold the LED in place. That's, that's everything I, I did. Um, so pretty simple build. 
there, there's a lot of harder things out there to build. A lot of gauges are a lot harder to build than this. This is a pretty simple build. If anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, absolutely throw them out there. And in the description of this video, I'm actually going to have the Thingiverse uh, uh, link. So you can go straight over there and all the parts are listed on Thingiverse um, and notes on the resistor and whatnot. So if you've ever built something before, you could easily build this. It's not super hard. But thanks for watching as always. Greatly appreciate it. You know, stay safe out there and happy flying.